Howdy peeps and welcome back to the channel for another review this time something a bit out of left field, a bit different a new manufacturer to me that's not to say they haven't been around a while but it's the first I've ever bought of theirs and it was bought on a whim and that is the IBG models Marmon Harrington Mark II mobile field force type armoured car to you and me Why did I buy it? A couple of reasons. There's a um, couple of state models have done the Lanchester armoured car, which does look cool, but quite a lot of people have bought that. And while it does look cool, it looks to be a really nice model, it didn't quite grab me. But I saw the box art on this and just thought, damn, that looks cool. So I had a squirrel eye at this moment. Uh, ooh, shiny. And again, I got this from the local model shop, so I did pay a little more than you would find it for online. I think it's on Amazon at about 30. I think I paid 35. But, you know, keep your local model shop in business, all that good stuff. So, what do we get in the box? That's what you're dying to know, isn't it? You're thinking, enough of the shiny artwork, Sharp. Show us the plastic. Show us the plastic. Okie dokie. So what I will do is I have a new routine. Unfortunately, these are all in really, really crinkly plastic bags again. I do apologise for for the uh, crinklesome noises that are going to be occurring later. They are bagged up fairly separately and not too tightly packed in. See, I have a new technique. It's called putting everything in the box lid at the start. And then as I go, put it back in the box bottom, so I can then put the box lid back out at the end. Makes sense to me anyway. Right, so let's take a look at our first sprues, shall we? Let's start out with some smaller ones. As I said, crinkly heat seal bags, but that's only a minor issue if you're reviewing it or trying to build it secretly and silently. <laughs> oh, pardon me. I had no idea that was coming. That caught me by surprise. I do apologise. Right, so, first sprue. I think I'm probably going to have to zoom in a bit because some of these are really quite nicely detailed. Now, Oh, here we go. This is going to take some remembering where I'm zoomed into as well. So we start with the first mini sprue. Let's get it the right way up. First glance, it does make me think of um, mini art. The way the sprues are labelled and laid out and the way the plastic looks. So we have a little, I'm guessing, Vickers machine gun with a ball mount, a handle sight, all that good stuff. The sprue is designed, is designed so you've got the raised bit which make, makes it look like it's been slide moulded but the barrel is solid. I can't see a hole in it anyway. But easy enough to drill out if we need to. And we have sprue C itself. You've got the inside part of the, the well, two of the wheels. We do have multiples of these sprues. I'll just show you. So we have another C and CB. So they can actually go straight into the box. We don't need to look at them twice. We've got some very fine, delicate parts. Everything else is really nice and crisply detailed. Assuming that's part of a seat, we've got the uh, butt grooves in it. And CA, we have an, another part of a wheel, whether well, that's the spare probably. And I'll grab a pokey pointy device, so more fiddly tiny little detail parts, 
everything else you know, really nice crisply molded no flash these radio boxes is really nicely detailed very very fine detailing on those and uh, yeah looking good so looking at the plastic I wouldn't be surprised if these were molded in the same factory as the mini art kits are or you know, plastic comes from the same place or the moulds come from the same mould maker uh, they do look very similar again spruce CE lots more fine delicate super fiddly detail parts which will hopefully build up and all fit together nicely I say if, if mini art is anything to go by then it should be okay their kits tend to require a little oh no they are all bagged individually from now on I say the kit mini art kits do fit well but they take a bit of modelling um, if you get one bit slightly out it will mess you up for the later parts of the build and given the delicacy of the detail parts on these we definitely keep in the bags just in case something fell off this is sprue B and I'll keep you zoomed in again so again much the same on the level of detail and Christmas and fidelity. As you saw, I've not got a clue what most of these parts are. I, mean, I can recognise a steering wheel and a fan when I see one, but, and a turret ring, and an exhaust, and what looked like the armoured covers for the front windows <laughs> and the side windows, but the rest of it is pretty much whatever it is gear stick yeah this is um given how delicate some of these parts are it's going to be interesting getting them off the sprue without breaking them so I'll uh, say so certainly things like that uh, gear stick and handbrake lever getting them off will require some delicacy maybe using either a hot knife or a razor saw rather than the stress of trying to just cut through them oh that's cool there is detail on the back of the steering wheel where the uh, not knurling but you know the uh, finger grips are so it doesn't just slide around in your hands and so we've got no eject spin marks in the way anywhere and these are the uh, covers that go over the rear wheels uh, they're also um, unditching planks as it were a nice uh, nice cross or diamond hatch detail in them so that one's all looking rather nice as well I think we might be on the winner here well providing it fits but, you know, it's only plastic we can make it fit if it doesn't want to that's what glue and filler were designed for and brute force if in doubt brute force so we have what is this one this is sprue A so larger parts but hey can you see nice crisp clean edges on them and I guess that's probably the back with some really nice well detail on there and the inner tub not a huge amount of detail on that but I get a feeling there's going to be quite a lot to go in there pickaxe head and handle shovel the various parts for the bonnet some beautiful well detail on those has to be said and just these little uh, these uh, plates again beautifully detailed delicate very fine delicate molding I keep saying fine and delicate and all that but it really is it's crisp flashless 
I've not seen any mould seams that jump out at me. There are some ejector pin marks, especially on the back of here. We've got a couple of stubs to get rid of and the marks, but as I'm fairly sure, probably got chassis rails running across there, so just sand them down flush and it'll be fine. It's all looking rather nice and sexy. And final sprue, as it were. There is more plastic in the box. But I am going to be very careful how I rebox this when I put it back away and put it on the shelf. So we have we have sprue F. Now I'll turn it this way so we can get the actual part in the in the camera shot. Have these sides of the main body shell. Again, crisp, clean, really, really nice. The same weld detail. There's a little bit of flash up here at the top edge, is that? Yeah, possibly. But it's the same on both, so it might be a weld seam that then joins up with the weld seam on the top. Apologies for my phone. And then we're back into some of the smaller, more filigree, delicate parts. Again, most of which I have no idea what they are. Well, there's some wheel hubs, I'm guessing. And some leaf springs moulded with the actual individual springs and it's a two stage by the looks of things that'll be the fronts I'm guessing it might be the rears yeah it'll be the rears, the extra weight some nice uh, fenders nicely supported as well by the sprue and the drive shafts he said pointing out and not putting them in shot crisp are very nicely moulded universal joints on them that you can actually see through. If I bring them up you might be able to see a bit better. 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 Get your English correct sharp. You can see through the actual universal joint on the drive shaft. It's not a solid thing. Which is a nice little touch. And then we have the main chassis rails again. Again same level of detail on the springs and just chassis rails and they actually look to be straight and square as well which is always a bonus and we have a couple of little ziplock baggies one with the turret and one with the tyres dinky teeny little turret well it's only got one Vickers machine gun in it so it doesn't have to look this is not going to be big is it Again, very, very nicely moulded with the raised rivet detail, the recessed panel lines, and the hinge detail on the top. I've got a feeling this is going to build up into a very nice looking little model. I'll pop that back in to keep it safe. And we have the tyres. I'll just pop one out because they're all going to look the same. We do have what looks like a little bit of mould release on this one though. Or it might just be a bit of grease and gunk. Yeah, just a bit of grease and gunk probably. Nice sidewall tread detail. And repeated on the other side. So the blank se separate part goes in. So we've got a single piece moulded tyre with a nice tread on it and no seams. Yep, that's going to look good. Could be interested in sanding down the uh, sprue points, or uh, sprue gates, but you know, cut them off nice and close and then use one of my chopped down thinny sticks from UMP. What I do is I get one of the regular thinny sticks as you can see this one has been chopped to pieces cut a piece off the end and cut it in half chop a piece off and cut it in half lengthways instead of being what 5 or 6 mil you get a 2.5-3 mil sander 
Next up is the clear parts. I won't bother getting them out because it's just two tiny little front windows and the little lights. So, yeah, they look clear enough to me. Nothing special in there to worry about. There we have another. Is this heat sealed or is there a way in? No, heat sealed. Careful so we don't slice the decals. So, decal wise, what do we have? Very little, but they do look to be very thin. They're uh, by Techmod. I think Techmod do do quite good decals. And so, not a lot, but they're all in register, clear, crisp, you know, clean. Do the job. There is a piece of brass wire in there as well, which I'm guessing is used for something. I'm not entirely sure what, but we shall find out when we go through the instructions. And then a small fret of photo etch, which I'm not entirely sure what the parts are. It looks like lap belts, tiny little hooks. And some foldy parts, so I will find out what they are as we go through and build it. And plastic coated on both sides, again, very reminiscent. Had there, put my teeth in, very reminiscent of a mini art photo etch. And then the instruction manual, which is actually quite large, so we'll zoom out. As an advert on the back for William Marshall's Marmon Harrington, A History of the South, South African Reconnaissance Car. On the back we have colour call out in Vallejo, so that suits me, but it's not exactly tricky. Black rust, gunmetal, olive green, light stone and wood. And sprue map with basically one sprue per page by the looks of things. You have the larger sprues and the smaller sprues and the etch is on one. Then we get to the actual instructions and they're a CAD method rather than line drawings. I generally I prefer a line drawing simply because these aren't the best printed a lot of instructions aren't, especially with smaller manufacturers. And being in grayscale, it can be hard to differentiate details and what you need to do. But we start off basically putting together a load of little sub-assemblies, bending up the etch parts and putting the rad and all that kind of good stuff together. More sub-assemblies, more sub-assemblies. It does appear that we're making a lot of sub-assemblies and then we're going to be putting them all together engine going together quite a heavily detailed little engine in this and as we go through so here we are we see with the radio boxes so let's stick all that together and then put 5b and 5a which is the etch we've already bent put it over the top i would leave doing that until i was actually putting that together though and a picture of the finished radio box then the duckboards, whatever you want to call them, for the going on the sides. Plenty of etch going on those as well. Fiddly little delicate parts. And the ladder frame chassis going together, the rear axle, drivetrain, engine going in up front. And the main bodywork going together. Or the main chassis or floor pan as it were gradually going together and being built up again more sub assemblies just being put together mainly as I just stab myself with my knife the MG going in you can have the turret open or closed so you can see what's inside because it is I wouldn't necessarily say it's a full interior it's got a good interior 
Although I've never actually seen inside one of these, obviously, so I don't know. It does have the second MG sticking out the side of the vehicle, although only on one side, so you kind of want to make sure people attack you from the left. Um, <laughs> again, more sub-assemblies, etc. going together. Front end and sides of the bodywork going on. The roof going on, which is already a sub-assembly that was done earlier. You can do it with the armour plate up or down for the windows. The same with the front end, you can do it with the uh, rad, rad doors closed or open. Tiny little P hooks going on the side. The skirt units going on. More tiny P bits going on, turret going on, and showing the two open and closed versions so you can have the front end opened up, the doors, the turret, and the back door as well. So you can show off all the interior. And we have call outs, we have one which is in colour E, which is dun 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 light stone so a kind of desert yellow uh, Demera sorry I, my Afrikaans is absolutely shocking it's even worse than my Klingon another one unidentified British unit in North Africa which is going to probably be yellow with green camo on it and then another South African Regiment, um, that one is going to be in the olive green, um, to the back page. So, that does look like a very nice, very interesting little build. Uh, definitely worth a look at if it's your kind of thing, or thang, or whichever way you want to look at it. Um, yeah, I'll, so once I get this built, I'll, it's another one of those ones where I'll probably do a build review of it, just to say how it goes together, how well it goes together, what problems there are, if any. Um, yeah. So, I hope you agree, a very cool little model. Different, it'll stand out on the shelf amongst all the tanks and everything else, so... Enjoy your modelling, have fun, peace out, rock on, bye bye.